Hello, how's it guys? This is episode three of season two. Um, yeah, I've changed my setup a little bit today. I missed my little old talkback microphone. This is normally in the position that it is when I'm doing a gig and I'm at front of house and this is my talkback and just swing it in, swing it out. Um, this became sort of like a thing of mine for the past couple of years. So I thought, let me take it out again, use this for some, some live streaming, get to talk on the microphone again. Um, yeah, so we had a good week last week. Um, this time slot obviously is a little bit different to, to season one, if you want to call it like that. So season one, we had a prime slot in the evening when nobody had anything to do because there's no gigs. Um, and we had quite a few live viewers, but we're still getting quite a nice uh, viewership just through, spread a little bit out throughout the day. Um, 
But I'm also one of my one of the things that you've seen if you've watched the previous two episodes. We try and keep it short within a half an hour. Uh, it was quite difficult with Paul last week. Sorry, Paul. Um, trying to keep Paul short and sweet is, yeah. Anyway, um, but we're going to get him back. Um, we're going to get him back once a month for the next couple of months. Uh, we're going to sp- talk about comms next time, uh, protocols around comms. And it's quite interesting. I mean, if you want to talk about the sound industry uh, um, that we're in at the moment, you know, if you're, if you're a live engineer and you're doing live gigs, you're missing live gigs. If you're a studio guy, you're probably still okay with certain clientele. If you're a, a broadcast guy, you've got different different struggles, corporate. Uh, but one thing we take for granted is just how wide our our industry is, really. Um, that where the, the audio field is involved in almost everything we do. Um, and it's and it's quite interesting if you if you take what we spoke about last week with Paul, and we're going to keep speaking on that subject. Uh, we've spoken about loudness before and all that, you know. And I've had some guys talk on different subjects. Um, but when you when you approach an industry that you're not familiar with, there's quite a few elements that you need to get your head around. Uh, the technical aspect, I mean, sitting behind the console, yeah, we can learn the console. Even now during lockdown, you can sit, get your head down, watch YouTube, um, get around a couple of consoles, uh, learn how they work. Not just consoles, other gear, some RF stuff. Uh, distribution or equipment um, interfaces all that kind of stuff and then if you get into a specific uh, field of work for example like broadcast there's on top of that there's that whole other almost world of lingo um, if you think about where the audio side of broadcast comes from where audio is just to be a you know they needed to hear what the guy on, t- on camera was saying but lighting is a component camera is a component then the distribution is a component um, and over the years, as the audio streams have developed, they've just climbed on and backboned onto the digital platform, onto the networking platform, where the operations side is pretty much, for lack of a better word, stayed the same. Uh, we're still putting sound with the picture. Uh, we're just capable of doing much more than that these days. I mean, if you're talking about music shows uh, and how we approach those, sports shows, how we approach those, um, you know, obviously studio dramas being recorded differently, but all the different facets. I've got different uh, lingo protocols, workflows, um, everything from data management to transport protocols to archiving to uh, um, um, conversion rates, um, streaming rates. All those kind of things is something you've got to get your head around. So if you want to be very versatile and be available to work on a couple of platforms, you need to know a little bit at least about everything so that you can get your foot in the door and start working, you know, working as an apprentice or working as a as a as an appy or junior tech on a gig is a good way of of learning. And I think that's something we've said a couple of times um, in our previous season where we spoke about communication, attitude, um, and just you know, learn, 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 learn. But you also shouldn't be scared of doing whatever you can. Um, if you get an opportunity to work on a film shoot as a as a runner or as a uh, you know a tech assistant or a boom swinger or something, okay, I'm not saying boom swinging. Boom swinging is difficult. You got to get fit for that job, and you got to know what you're doing. So capturing sound from that perspective is extremely important. I mean, you can make or break an entire crew's day by just not knowing what you're doing with a broomstick. Big jokes, um, but you know, boom swinging and listening on the comms, understanding how the microphone works, pickup patterns work, direct a- di- sound that's on axis, off axis. Um, reflections and all these kind of things plays a big part. I mean, you become a professional uh, audio technician from that point of view, and then field capturing. You know how to how to capture, what to capture, what to do, what not to do, problem solve, um, and all those environments you work in is a great learning opportunity. You know, if you if you want to learn how to uh, um, mix a band or anything like that, you know, if you get the opportunity to sit next to a guy that's that's doing that. You know, just sit, make notes, ask questions, take note of what he's doing, and contextualize it. I think that's something that a lot of guys uh, tend to not do, forget on purpose, but you forget because you get caught up in the moment. And you see someone doing something on YouTube or even in a live environment, think, wow, that's awesome. I want to try that. But what you don't take for into account is the context. Um, everything we do has to be with the reason and has to be within context. I mean, I can do something on a console which has a profound effect for you in what you're hearing, but I'm actually doing it to compensate for 
an issue that we're having, either on the PA or on the set setup or the acoustics or something that's happening in the room, something some weird, either routing or EQ or effect or anything uh, to that 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 length, and then you watch what I'm doing. And you say, "Can I see what EQ did there? Or can I see what you did there?" And it's great. I'll show you, but ask me how to, to explain why, because I think that's more valuable than the EQ. You know, if you've got a musician, I've had this over the years a couple of times where I've done smaller gigs where you get to interact with the musicians a lot and maybe one of the instruments on instrumentalists on stage will come and have a listen or get feedback from someone. They say, listen, your voice just tonight was amazing or the tone of your bass really came through your acoustic guitar. So the effect on that was that's stunning, you know, and that's the feedback he gets. Then he wants to come and see, what did you do? What did you do? I want to tell the next guy how to do it. You know, I might just have gone to the, you know, the first available effects go to preset one because I didn't have time, push it up, and in that, in that room, in that environment, it just clicked, it worked, and I sort of left it on that, maybe fiddle with it, with it, with the, uh, the decay time and something like that, but it wasn't really a priority on my side. I just got a nice sound. Obviously, you bring the effect in in context, and it's, it works great, and then someone to come and ask, can I see what effect you use? I want to use that one all the time. You know, without dissing people and and, and putting them to shame, you can't say, well, you can't do that because it's never going to work again. Explain to them what you were looking for in the sound and how you got to that solution and what you were trying to achieve, and then this helped you to achieve that. But next time you're in this environment, you know, or in a different environment, again, try and get to an outcome. There's no there's no quick fix. I think that's what, I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get to. The quick fix in terms of plug and play, switch on, we've all heard that term, you know, a lot of PAs are plug and play. In other words, they're building things into it to make it more user friendly for setup. But there's still a bit where you plug it in and how you play is still important. Um, I mean, I can plug in a PlayStation and play, but it doesn't mean I'm going to win anything. It's going to be fun, but no use for anybody else. Um, so contextualize it, make sure you understand what you're doing. You know, if you only got two, two, uh, um, two poles and, or two sticks and speakers and two subs and a little mixer, you know, know it backwards. If you get pulled into a news cafe or pulled into a school hall or pulled into an outside event, again, understand the limitations. You know, if you if you do a, a disco gig every Friday night for a year in a, in a hall and it really pumps and everybody's really happy and then they ask you, can you do the same thing next Saturday on the field? And you go, oh, yeah, I'll just bring my stuff. And then next Sunday morning you're sitting crying in a puddle somewhere because you've just blown all your subs because you're trying to do what you did indoors but you don't understand the what an indoors and outdoors venue is and the amount of power you need outside to move or to create that energy because you don't have boundaries you don't have that added uh, perceived loudness from the reverence in the room and all that kind of stuff uh, I've, I've seen that many times where guys just take a system that was designed for one thing take it outside and it just everything goes haywire um, and vice versa you can't just do what you do outside and ma make it work inside it's, it's uh, contextualizing things is vital um, and I think that's one of the reasons I want to bring so many different people onto this talk show to talk about their approach from their perspective. And then, as you saw last week, I keep throwing questions out there because someone, even me, I would I would get caught up in talking about something that that I'm familiar with. And um, you know, there's a there's a term in the in the uh, in the, in the world called uh, jargon. You know, it sounds like we you know name dropping start talking about technical terms and all that kind of stuff from our perspective. And it makes sense to people that's in our field. Other people sort of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got no clue. Um, you know, and even sometimes to from, from a different field, they might, if you if you take the two seconds to explain yourself or what it is you're talking about or make sure they understand what the language that you're using, you know, a much more, much more productive conversation. Um, you know, I've noticed over the years, just even between live production companies, we got power cables, you know, some one company calls it Janus's, other one calls it, you know, 15 amp extensions, other one calls it uh, Janus couplers or whatever you want to call it with a length attached to it, you know, and then maybe something for the thickness. Generally, the thickness will, go, will be accompanied by the length. Um, but everybody just talks about it differently. Or uh, some companies just talk about audio cables. And when they say audio cables, they're actually talking about a mic lead. Other companies say mic lead. And, you know, I generally, we tend to talk about mic leads, which means it's on stage, or signal cable, which means it's in the infrastructure. Signal cable can be XLR to XLR. Mic lead is an XLR to an XLR. But when we prep, we prep mic leads for the stage. We prep signal cables for the dis distribution. Um, and obviously, depending on the gear that we have, 
you know, the, that language is known to us, but someone that comes in here, you say, give me some mic leads, and then you say, give me some signal cables, and they're like, uh, what are those? And you say, well, it's mic leads. Well, I thought that was mic leads. You say, yeah, but it's just how we refer to things. Um, same thing, you go into broadcast environment, I know, and you, t you tell a techie that's new to the field and maybe he's done a couple of gigs in the production world, you tell him, um, just go help the guys rig the IB IFB systems. And he goes, okay, and he runs off. And for the first 20 minutes, he doesn't know what IFB is, you know, interruptible fallback. You tell him that, and he goes, okay, what does that mean? It's the earpieces, you know, it's an in-ear monitor, which is what we call it. Uh, in-ear monitoring, because we've taken the term monitoring, which a musician takes, and now we've moved it to the in-ear. Interruptible fallback's been around a lot longer in a studio environment or broadcast environment than what we've used it in a live environment. Um, it's not always wireless, it just happens to be sometimes. Uh, on, on big productions, it helps, obviously. Um, but just something small like that will indicate um, where this, and, and if you tell the guy what it is, he'll know exactly how to work it, but the language barrier within the technical field is something you need to consider. Um, and that goes the same for field, uh, uh, you know, job allocation. So if you talk in the live industry, we've got front of house board, uh, monitor land, stage decks, backline decks, all that. In broadcast, you've got a whole host of guys with designations. In the film industry, you've got a different bunch of guys with designations uh, in the studio as well. So understanding those things helps you, you know, navigate through all those different, uh, I wouldn't call it pitfalls, but um, just communication stumbling blocks. Because at the end of the day, you know, source to listener in whatever context you're in. Live environment, source on stage, musician singing, listener, audience sitting. Uh, studio shoot, again, on-camera personnel or person. Microphone, listener at home on TV. Uh, radio, presenter, listener in car. Uh, streaming, anybody, anywhere, to anybody, anywhere. <laughs> um, but again, I mean, some of you have scrolled, and we've spoken about this. You scroll on YouTube or you scroll on some of these streaming platforms that's out there. It looks amazing. You stop, it sounds horrible, you keep scrolling. Or, or you scroll, scroll, and you'll scroll past something that doesn't look great, but it sounds amazing. You know, so the one can't go without the other. Um, if it looks amazing and it sounds decent, people are more inclined to sit and listen. Um, if it's something someone wants to watch and it sounds amazing, it doesn't look too good, your brain will sell you into the fact that it's interesting and you can communicate with what you're watching because it's clear, it's understandable, it's in context with the audio. Um, you know, silent movies are great, but it's a whole different ball game. You know, Fast and the Furious with no sound will just be fast and frustrating. Um, yeah, I'm doing my jokes. I get funnier by the age. I'm older now. Um, interesting about the language barrier uh, with our technical jargon. It does help to ensure that the person understands what we're talking about. Yeah, good comment then to be so. Um, it's exactly what, what happens, you know, I've seen a lot of guys get to, uh, or even come to us here, and you know they know, because you've seen them work on gigs, but if you take five minutes just to sit with one of the other guys in the company, and just say, what do you guys call this, why do you do this, how do you talk about this, and you guys prep, how do you prep, how do you pack, how do you, you know, it's got nothing to do with sound engineering, it's got nothing to do with taking a stage, it's just communication, which means when you get on the job and I ask you to do something, I don't have to explain myself, again, speed, and productivity. Um, I'll just look at some of the comments we've had. We've got a couple of views. Not, at least I'm not talking to myself like usual. Um, not, on, not on air or off air. I talk to myself a lot. Especially in my office. It's hilarious. I sit here and guys walk in because the door's behind me. And I can't see. I don't have a camera on. So I can't see what's behind me. And then I'm doing something. And I'm getting really interested. And I start explaining what I'm doing, and I'm talking, and then when I look around again, there's no one behind me. So I don't know how long I was talking to myself. It happened again yesterday. I, and then I just laugh. So if you didn't know what I was doing, you're walking, I'm talking, and then you're like, who's in there with him? Who's he talking to? Um, but yeah, I think that's that's just for me today. Just a short and sweet one. Uh, again, don't don't be scared to keep learning, keep understanding. We've got a uh, we've taken that we've got a Ellen Heat console downstairs. I got the guys to get the hands or head around. Uh, we don't own one, so we borrowed one. Get our heads around it, try and do some videos on it. Uh, maybe I'll do something on it next week. Uh, different GUI, different interface, great sounding console, different methodology. Uh, there's so many consoles out there. I mean, I get the questions all the time. What's your favorite console? Um, well, the one I own. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it all depends on your workflow. Uh, some guys will, you know, you always tend to go to the familiar, which helps because you you're more productive on it. Um, and as new things come out and there's things that are more uh, or better off, it's not necessarily going to be mean your gig's better because you don't know it yet. So spend the time to work on something. Spend the time to 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 get to know any material you have, whether it's microphones even. You know, a lot of guys take for granted, I've got a microphone, stick it on a stand, my problem is solved. Focus on the capturing. Understand how the mic works. Put headphones on. If you're a stage tech, or even a monitor engineer or a guy working, I often got put myself on a belt pack, put my in-ears in, and walk around, go to the drum kit and solo that microphone and listen to it, you know. If you've got stage techs on stage, you put them on IFB system, on a... On a monitoring system make sure you can route stuff to them and you can route a solo bus to them so if they go to go fix the snare mic or fix the kick mic because it's rattling you know send it to their ears they can hear what they're doing um, and that also helps them hear what you're saying because then you can talk to them and say listen can you, a little bit further away it's cl- too much too clicky or too this or too that or a little bit too or much higher at or you know anything like that so all comes down to listening all comes down to communication and understanding uh, the gear because you're you're more valuable the more value you place on yourself and the more you educate yourself. And I think that's something to take, not to take for granted. Um, I don't think we've any, any questions. Yeah. Even Paul said there locally and internationally, big difference. I mean, South African broadcast market. And I, and I think last week when I spoke to Paul before the show, I, I told him, let's talk about South Africa first. We'll come into the international stuff later because some of the protocols, even for him, that's worked locally. You're very successful. You go international. You have to adapt to their system. You can't explain to them what you're doing. You're the odd one out, so you've got to adapt to their system. Um, different different countries work on completely different. Um, even in the production industry, in the live industry, if you um, maybe what I'll do is I'll get Adrian or Simon online, guys that have worked or, or Andreas that have worked um, in Europe a lot. You know, just talk to them about their experience in terms of you know what you do in South Africa and what you do Africa and what you do in Europe. From a, from a working approach, uh, not a skill set. I would talk from a from a discipline approach. Um, I know that you you know we've got a lot of um, what do we call it all rounders. You know, you get a monitor guy, but he's also patching the RF and he's patching his console and he's doing this and he's doing that and on a gig and he's running and fixing that. Whereas there are countries where it's union based and you know you work, if you get booked as X, that's what you do. You don't walk to the other side of the stage. It's not your responsibility. You know, you stick to what you're supposed to be doing. And you stay within the brief and you take responsibility for your your element or you do what you're told if you're under under direction you know so every every um, element again has got different implications um, see if I've got any no comments or yeah I think that's about it for today nice 20 minute short session uh, I'll see you guys again next week uh, again, if you've got any comments or, or questions or suggestions of what stuff you want me to cover or questions to answer, even like last week, we answer a couple of questions post broadcast on the on the um, on the chats. So keep commenting, keep chatting, and we'll keep communicating. Hope you guys enjoy it. Give us your feedback. Subscribe to our channel. Um, yeah, jack of all trades, all rounders, same thing. <laughs> Not everybody's a jack. There's girls as well. All around us, better phrase. Um, we've had some very, I mean, I remember from, from lecturing early at a couple of girls, a couple of years where girls have been top students in the live environment at, at ASE, um, and some of them doing really well internationally. You know, I've kept track with some of them, and they, they, they're they doing very well in what they're doing. So, you know, it's, it's a quite a big world out there, but again, it comes down to you developing your own skill set. Okay, that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Keep contact and we'll chat soon.